Hello everybody, welcome to week number four in pigeon genetics video series. This week we're going to talk about recessive reds. Last week we talked about the spread gene. Spread is what turns a blue pigeon to a black, an ash red to a lavender, etc. Spread is an autosomal dominant gene, meaning if you have the gene, it's being displayed. You can't hide, you can't hide a dominant gene. Um, with recessive genes, you can hide it. You can have a blue bar that's just visually a blue bar that carries recessive red and you know any anything can carry it and hide it. Um, like I said, recessive red is an autosomal, it is not sex linked like we talked about with the base colors. So both the hens and the cocks have two genes available for it and they both must have both genes filled to display it. They must be homozygous recessive red to show it. Now recessive red is epistatic, which just means it masks over, it hides other colors. So, like we talked about with video one and two, every pigeon has a base color, every pigeon has a pattern. I don't know what all these are underneath, um, but it's epistatic, mask over everything. So, and recessive red mask over everything in the pigeon world except for recessive white. That gene is more powerful than it. And the only thing more powerful than that is albino. Now, it doesn't always mask over everything completely, just like spread always doesn't completely blur out everything. Recessive red's the same way. Sometimes you can see things like this recessive red here. This is a pretty good recessive red. They vary, they vary in shade. Again, don't mind the white flights. That's just, uh, that's all the birds in this breed have white flights. That's not part of the recessive red gene or anything like that. Um, but typically they would be red as well. But recessive red comes in all different shades and varieties. This is a pretty good recessive red, a nice deep, deep red. The hardest part for recessive red, the hardest parts for recessive red to take care of is the flights and then the tail. Those can oftentimes be ashy. Like you see, this tail is not not really as red as the rest of the bird is. It's kind of kind of got an ashy color to it. Now, one thing about recessive red being epistatic is it's not a good job at hiding the base color. This bird appears to be blue underneath, and in the rump area is where you can see it if it does bleed through. And you can see a lot of blue in there. It kind of folds over to the underside a little bit. So that's something you obviously don't want in your recessive reds, but does happen. Now, also with recessive reds, sometimes you can get what's called agates, which is where they start sh showing white that isn't part of grizzle or any pie gene. Like this white, there's not really much known on this, but I'll tell you that this is not grizzle and it's not pie. And this can happen with recessive reds. It doesn't mean that this bird would even breed it through. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really done scientific studies on it or anything. You can see it in the head as well. And then the overall redness of this bird isn't even, you know, that good. Now, we talked about red being epistatic. It, it masks over everything. However, with grizzle, if you do have a grizzle, it turns a recessive red into a red model, like you see a lot with in tipplers and stuff. Um, there's also red white sides, like the Danish high flyers, and things such as that. Also, the almond gene turns recessive reds into what they call deroids, where they're they're red with some black flecks shining through. I just wanted to clear up that recessive reds aren't necessarily spread, as in, you know, spread, like we talked about last week. Less people think that recessive red must be spread since the whole pigeon is red. Now they could be spread, like I said, they're apostatic, so you could just have a blue bar with the dominant spread gene and then with homozygous recessive red on top of it. But the spread gene in and of itself has nothing to do with recessive red. And also, the best recessive reds, like I showed you that blue that was bleeding through, the best recessive reds, most people say ash red. However, uh, a pigeon fancier I know in the genetic world said that he's tested all three base colors with recessive red and he's found brown to be the best. 
And at that, you want them to be tea patterns and not blue bars because tea patterns are the darkest. Um, so, you know, it makes it really easy for the red to fill in everything when it's already pretty much filled in with color. In this week's video, we're going to talk about Duluth. Dilute is the gene that turns a normal recessive red into this yellow here. It also turns a blue bar into a silver, it turns a black to a dun, and an ash red to a cream. It's just a, it's a sex linked recessive gene. This is an autosomal recessive gene. So stay tuned for next week and thanks for watching.